Gloria. What is it, Doris? Can't you see I'm busy? You're leaving after you graduate, right? Finally. Yay. Your bedroom will be mine too. More room for me and my fabulousness. Hold on a second, Doris. You're getting way ahead of yourself. I still have three whole months before I leave. Can't you contain your excitement for a little longer? Ugh, whatever. I'm just happy about it now. I can already picture all the ways I'll redecorate and make that space my own. You know, it would be nice if you showed a little more interest in why I'm leaving. Don't you care about my future? Nope, no really. It's not like your departure affects my life in any significant way. So, I'm just gonna keep doing my thing and not worry about it. Wow, Doris, you never cease to disappoint. I'm leaving because I want to go to college, to pursue my dreams and broaden my horizons. It's a big step, and I thought you might at least show some support. Support? Ha! Huh. What's that? I don't need to care about your college dreams. It's not like I have any aspirations of my own, right? You're unbelievable, Doris. You have no idea how hard I've been working to save money from my part-time job to make this happen. And guess what? Our lovely parents yelled at me for being selfish and saving up. They took all the money I saved and gave it to you. Well, sounds like they finally made a sensible decision. Better to spend money on someone as beautiful as me, right? It's not like they'd want to waste it on someone as, uh, aesthetically challenged as you. Wow, Doris, just wow. Your shallowness knows no bounds. I hope one day you realize that beauty isn't everything and there's more to life than just appearances. Oh, spare me the lecture, Gloria. I'm perfectly content being the gorgeous one. It's not my fault you ended up on the wrong side of the mirror. You know what, Doris? I'm done trying to reason with you. Just keep living in your shallow little world while I focus on building a future that's not solely based on looks. Fine, be that way. Just make sure to take your ugly face and your self-righteousness far away from here when you leave. I'll be enjoying the extra room in the meantime. Is that all you can say? Seriously, Doris? Ugh, seriously Gloria, don't you have anything better to do than nag me? That's all I have to say, okay? Deal with it. Oh, I'll deal with it all right. Just like I've had to deal with your annoying voice for years. It's amazing how different we look, isn't it? I mean, you turned out so ugly. Wow, Gloria, you never cease to amaze me with your tact and grace. Thank God, I'm the beautiful one in this family. I should thank you for taking all the ugly genes. Oh, please, don't thank me. I'm just doing my part in making you look better by comparison. You owe me big time for that, sis. Thank me? Really? You're welcome, I guess. But let's be real, sis. No amount of jeans or jeans can make up for your lack of style. Excuse me? I have my own sense of style, thank you very much. It's called effortlessly casual, unlikely or try-hard, fashion disaster vibes. Oh, effortlessly casual? Is that what you call it? Well, I hope you're planning to take that effortlessly casual style with you when you leave, because guess what? I'm leaving right after the graduation ceremony. Finally, some good news. Maybe I'll get some peace and quiet around here. Whatever, Gloria. Just go already. 
I won't miss your constant nagging and snarky remarks. Trust me, the feeling is mutual. But don't worry, I'll be leaving this place and you'll be stuck dealing with mom and dad all by yourself. Oh, joy. Just what I always wanted. Thanks for reminding me of the impending doom, Gloria. You're welcome, Doris. Anything to brighten your day. Now, let's just get through this graduation ceremony so I can make my grand exit. Fine, let's just get it over with. I can't wait for you to be out of my hair. Likewise, sis. Likewise. Three weeks later. Arthur, are you all done with the move? Hey, Gloria. Yeah, I just finished loading the trunk with the last few boxes. It took forever, but it's finally done. The moving truck just left the driveway. I'm walking to the train station now. What about you? Wow. You really got finished with everything quickly. Impressive. I'm still waiting on the platform for my train to arrive. It should be here any minute now. Yeah, I wanted to get everything done as efficiently as possible. Can't waste a second, you know? Now all that's left is to take the train, and I'm home free. Absolutely. Just a straight subway ride from here, and we'll be in our new cities, starting fresh. It's such a liberating feeling, isn't it? Exactly. It's like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. I can finally breathe and embrace this new chapter of my life. I totally get it, Arthur. We're in different cities now, you in New York and me in Chicago. But hey, even though we're far apart, we should definitely try to meet up sometime. It'll be great opportunity to explore our new surroundings together. Oh, for sure. I'd love that. We can be each other's tour guides and discover the best hidden gems of our respective cities. Count me in. Awesome. Consider it a plan, Arthur. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's hope we can both find jobs in our new locations. We don't want to be wandering around aimlessly, right? You're absolutely right, Gloria. Finding jobs should be our top priority. We'll conquer the job market, no doubt about it. We're talented, driven individuals, after all. That's the spirit, Arthur. I have complete faith in both of us. We're starting this new chapter with determination and ambition. Nothing can stop us. Absolutely. So, here's to new beginnings, exciting adventures, and successful job hunts. Cheers, Gloria. Cheers, Arthur. May our paths cross again soon, and may our futures be filled with endless opportunities and success. Let's make this journey count. Many months later. Gloria. Mom and Dad told me to tell you this. Tell me what? They are asking when you are sending them money. What are you talking about? You need to send money home. You already got your first paycheck, right? Send it all as soon as possible. All? That's what they said. That's impossible. Huh? I have to pay for my living expenses. That has nothing to do with us. You're the one that decided to leave on your own. That's why you need to pay them back for all the money they spend raising you. That's just crazy, you know? They already took most of the money that I had saved up for college. It's like they're determined to make sure I can't pursue my dreams. Well, maybe if you weren't so ugly, they wouldn't have left the need to take your money. Going to college wouldn't magically make you popular, you know. 
Ugh, Doris, can you for once not focus on my appearance? The reason why I want to go to college has nothing to do with popularity. It's about education, growth, and expanding my horizons. Whatever, Gloria. Just send the money now. Dad said to give them your address and the address of the place you work for. They want to keep tabs on you, I guess. No way am I giving them all that information. They've already meddled enough in my life. I'm not going to let them control every aspect of it. Eh? What's your problem, Gloria? They just want to keep in touch and make sure you're safe. Can't you understand that? I've had enough, Doris. I'm blocking you now. I can't deal with your constant defense of their actions and your lack of support. This is toxic, and I need to protect myself. Wait, Gloria. Don't do this. We're family, we're supposed to stick together. Well, it seems like you're more interested in supporting them than supporting me. I'm cutting you guys out of my life. Tell that to our parents. Goodbye, Doris. Hey, hold on a minute. You can't just shut me out like this. We're supposed to be twins, Gloria. Maybe we're twins by blood, but that doesn't mean we have to be connected in every aspect of our lives. I deserve to surround myself with people who uplift and support me. Goodbye, Doris. One year later. Is it true? You have a boyfriend? What? Who is this? Duh. It's your sister. I changed my number so I can contact you now. What do you want? Like I just said, is it true that you have a boyfriend? Why? My friend was in New York and saw you holding hands with a guy. She took a picture and showed it to me. I was so shocked your boyfriend was voted the most popular boy in my high school. Austin Hall Oh. I wouldn't know since we went to separate schools. He was probably the number one most popular in our town. Is that right? So, you think you know everything, huh? Well, I know enough. But let's talk about the present, shall we? I heard that Austin, the guy who left high school just like you did, is now your boyfriend. Is that true? What if he is? What's it to you? Oh, nothing. I just find it quite lucky that you managed to snag him. How did that happen? Does he have a thing for ugly girls or something? Doris, that's a really mean thing to say. Looks aren't everything in a relationship, you know. Oh please, Gloria. Don't act all high and mighty. I've seen his past girlfriends, and while they may not be as beautiful as me, they weren't bad either. Why are you even talking about his past girlfriends? It's not relevant to our conversation. Well, maybe he's just taking a break from pretty girls and decided to try dating an ugly one like you, just to see how it is. Doris, that's enough. I won't tolerate your insults and shallow judgments. Relationships are about so much more than physical appearances. I thought you would understand that. Whatever, Gloria. I've said what I wanted to say. I'm done here. Bye. Fine, if that's how you want to end this conversation. But let me tell you. Doris, your obsession with beauty is shallow and toxic. I deserve someone who values me for who I am, not just my appearance. Goodbye, Doris. Six months later. Gloria. Listen. It's really important. 
Ugh, what now? I have something incredibly exciting to tell you. Fine, what is it? I can't believe you're not more enthusiastic. I got married. Oh wow, congratulations. That's nice. Nice? That's all you have to say? I thought you'd be thrilled for me. Look, Doris, I'm really happy for you and everything, but I'm just really busy today. Can we talk about this later? Busy, huh? Well, I guess some people just don't have time for important milestones in their friends' lives. That's not fair, Doris. I'm genuinely happy for you. It's just that I have my own things going on right now. Oh, I see. So you're too busy with your own life to celebrate mine? Typical. That's not what I meant, Doris. I just think it's great that you found someone special, but marriage isn't the only measure of happiness, you know? Easy for you to say. You've probably had a million boyfriends already. But hey, good for you that you're so content being single. Whoa, hold on a second. That's not fair to say. Just because I'm not married doesn't mean I'm not happy. And it's not a competition. Well, it feels like one. I thought you were my best friend, but I guess you don't really care about the important things in my life. Doris, that's not true at all. I care about you deeply. I just need you to understand that everyone has their own path and their own priorities. I guess I get that. It's just hard not to feel a little hurt. I understand, and I'm sorry if I made you feel that way. We'll celebrate your marriage properly, I promise. Just give me some time. Fine, but don't take long. I expect a grand celebration, you know. Of course, Doris. You'll get the celebration you deserve. Wait. I have something else to tell you. What? Guess who my husband is. No clue. I haven't kept up with any of your relationships. Really? You went to a private school from elementary and on while I went to the local public school. And I haven't been back to our hometown since I left. We don't have the same group of friends. We don't have any common friends either. We do share one. I don't know who that is. Fine. I'll tell you. Check this photo. Huh. Now you know? Is that... I guess that looks like Austin Hall. What do you mean looks like? He has a twin. Didn't you know that? Now that you mentioned it. His twin is just like you. Left soon after graduating and hasn't been heard from since. Anyways, I got married to your boyfriend Austin. He's my husband now. Oh, is that right? Why did you marry Austin? Why are you talking like that? Is it because you're jealous and you have nothing else to say? No. It's a genuine question. How do I put this? You like guys that are handsome and rich, right? If you were to get married, the man would have to be those two things, that hasn't changed, right? Well, yeah. I need someone to match my beauty. So then, why did you choose Austin? I'm not following. Austin started a company two years ago, he's the president. What? The product that they launched has become a success. His company keeps growing. He's at the height of it all right now. He came back to town three months ago. 
so I'd snatched him up right then and there. I got pregnant. Pregnant? And I made him marry me. The picture I sent is just from a photo shoot. We're going to have a proper ceremony after the baby is born. Wait a minute. What? I'm not handing Austin back to you. Even if you still have feelings for him. That's not it. What is it then? It's going to get complicated. I thought that I should tell you. Huh? First of all, my boyfriend is Arthur. Arthur? That person is Austin, his twin. Arthur went to the same high school as me. Our whole life was alike so we got along well with each other. So, two ugly people got together. That's hilarious. I should probably say. Austin and Arthur are fraternal twins. Unlike us, they're identical. Their family favored Austin because he was born first. They treated Arthur as the spare. Austin wanted Arthur to look different. So from elementary school and on, he made Arthur wear thick crimped glasses. Even though they have the same face, Austin became the popular one. Wait a minute. The person my friend saw in New York was. Arthur with his glasses off. He doesn't need to wear glasses since he doesn't need to wear glasses since he doesn't live with them anymore. Oh, okay. Whatever, I guess. About that. What if I told you that was wrong? What do you mean? What's wrong? Well, remember when I said Austin is still good-looking and has money? Yeah, that's not entirely accurate. Wait, what? You're saying I got the information mixed up? How could I mess that up? I know, it's a bit complicated. See, I made a mistake when I told you about Austin and Arthur. Okay, here's the thing. The one with the successful company, the one who's actually well off, is Arthur. Huh? So, Austin isn't the one with the money? Nope, sorry to burst your bubble. Austin is actually unemployed at the moment. What? Are you serious? I thought he had a stable job and everything. I hate to break it to you, but Austin has been struggling to find employment. He's been facing a tough job market, and it's been a real challenge for him. This is unbelievable. I had no idea he was having such a hard time. I feel terrible now. How did I not know about this? It's not your fault, Doris. Austin didn't want to burden anyone with his problems, so he didn't talk about it much. Well, what about the money? I assumed he was doing well financially. Is that wrong too? Unfortunately, yes. Austin is actually carrying a hefty debt of $50,000 in student loans. So it's been a real financial strain on him, especially since he hasn't been able to find a job to start paying it off. I can't believe I got it all wrong. I feel so foolish. I never imagined things were so tough for him. It's okay, Doris. We all make assumptions sometimes. But it's important to remember that things aren't always as they seem. You're right. I should have been more considerate and not jump to conclusions. I need to apologize to Austin and offer my support. That's a great idea, Doris. I'm sure he'll appreciate it. But there's more to the story. The Hall family, Austin and Arthur's family, is actually going through a rough patch right now. Hold on, what do you mean? 
Are you saying things aren't going well for their family? Yes, unfortunately. Their father recently got laid off, and it's been a major blow to their income. They're relying heavily on the money their mother makes from her part-time job to get by. No way. Are you serious? Actually, they pestered Arthur about money hundreds of times before. But Arthur has no intentions on helping the family that treated him so badly. He shot them down and cut off all contact. Wait. That means... Also, the last message Austin wrote to Arthur was, I'm marrying a rich girl. I got her pregnant, so she can't get away from me. I don't need you anymore. You're the girl that Austin was talking about. Huh? What? Well I guess. The whole family is after you and dad's money. Wait a second. There's no way daddy has that kind of money. I was actually just talking to Aunt Lauren about this. You're always wearing high-end brand things. You chose to go to an expensive college. People around you probably think that you have a lot of money. No. I thought that Austin was the one with all the money. Sorry, my service is kind bad. I'm actually on board an airplane right now. Why? Are you on vacation or something? Ugh, yeah. Arthur and I decided to combine our honeymoon with a destination wedding. It's like killing two birds with one stone, you know? What? Seriously? That's so excessive. Can't you just have a normal wedding and a separate honeymoon like everyone else? Well, we wanted to make it a memorable experience, something out of the ordinary. Plus, it saves us time and money. Efficiency, Doris, efficiency. No way. I can't believe you're actually doing this. It's like you're trying to one-up everyone else's wedding plans. Oh, please. Arthur and I got our marriage license last month, and we thought, why not make it a grand affair? We deserve it. That's just so over the top. I can't even wrap my head around it. And now you're about to take off and leave me behind? Yeah, sorry, but I have to turn off my phone. No distractions during our luxurious trip, you know? Wait. That's not fair. I want to talk to you more before you go. I have things to tell you too, you know? Oh, come on, Doris. Can't you just let me have this moment? Arthur and I need some quality time together without any interruptions. Quality time? More like selfish time. You're leaving me hanging while you gallivant around on your fancy honeymoon. Well, excuse me for wanting to prioritize my relationship. And don't worry, you can have Austin all to yourself. I'm sure he'll keep you entertained. Ugh, Austin? No thanks. I want Arthur. You can have Austin instead, since you've so obsessed with your perfect little vacation. Nice try, Doris. Arthur is mine, and I wouldn't trade him for anyone, especially not Austin. But hey, guess what? We're changing our numbers the second we get back. What? Why? You can't just cut off contact like that. We're supposed to be sisters. Oh, don't worry, Doris. We'll make sure you get the new numbers. We just thought it would be a fresh start for us. You know, leave all the annoying people behind. Annoying people? Is that what you think of me? Well, I never have. Come on, Doris. It's about time someone knocked you from your high horse. 
Maybe this will teach you some humility. Knocked from my high horse? How dare you? I don't need a lecture from you about humility. Well, maybe you do. Goodbye forever, sis. Have a fabulous time wallowing in your own self-importance. Goodbye forever? Fine. I don't need you and your snobby wedding anyway. Have fun pretending like you're better than everyone else. I will. Good riddance, Doris. Enjoy your mediocre existence while I bask in marital bliss. After that. Well, word on the street is that Doris and Austin called it quits and got a divorce. Turns out, they were only in it for the money and ended up having a huge fight. I mean, who would have seen that coming, right? Now, here's where things get really interesting. The Hall family and my family have been on a wild goose chase trying to track down me and Arthur. But we weren't about to let them find us that easily. We decided to take some drastic measures to ensure they'd never locate us. Arthur went ahead and sold his company, using the money to start a brand new venture. Talk about a fresh start, am I right? But that wasn't all. We knew that even if we moved away, our families would somehow manage to sniff us out. So, we made the tough call to change our names as well. It wasn't exactly something we wanted to do, but we felt it was necessary for our own peace of mind. You won't believe the mess my family is in, though. It's like they're drowning in debt. And get this, Doris actually went ahead and gave up her child to an orphanage. I can't even wrap my head around that decision. Meanwhile, my parents are busting their butts every single day, just trying to scrape together enough to pay off their debts. It's a tough situation, but Arthur and I have made a promise to ourselves. We're determined to break the cycle and create a loving environment for our own family. We want to be different from our parents and give our kids the kind of upbringing we never had. Life can be messy, but we're doing whatever it takes to make the best of it.